Food Fermentation The mother started fermenting papaya, also known as achara. Then suddenly, her eldest son approached and wondered about the smell that comes from the kitchen. Mother! Mother! What is that smell that pervades the entire house? Oh, I'm about to ferment papaya called achara, one of your father's favorite delicacies. I know what papaya is, but I'm not familiar with the word ferment that you have said, mom. If you're really curious about it, I can teach you some through watching this video. Hello fellas! Today, we'll talk about fermentation, the bacteria involved and the benefits it provides. I hope you had a good time! Fermentation is a natural process through which microorganisms like yeast and bacteria convert carbs such as starch and sugar into alcohol or acids. These alcohol or acids then act as a natural preservative and give fermented foods a distinct zest and tartness. Also, fermentation promotes the growth of beneficial bacteria known as probiotics. In terms of benefits, number one, it improves digestive health. Probiotics created during fermentation can help restore the balance of friendly bacteria in your gut and may help with digestive issues. Evidence suggests that probiotics can help with irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, a common digestive disorder. Number two, boost your immune system. Your immune system is influenced by the bacteria that lived in your gut. Fermented foods can enhance your immune system and lower your risk of illnesses, like the common cold, due to their high probiotic content. Number 3. Makes food easier to digest. Fermentation aids in the breakdown of nutrients in food, making it easier to digest than unfermented foods. Lactose, the natural sugar in milk, is broken down into simpler sugar like glucose and galactose during fermentation. As a result, lactose intolerant sufferers may usually tolerate fermented dairy products like kefir and yogurt. You might be curious how fermentation works. Listen to this. Fermentation bacteria are anaerobic but use organic molecules as their final electron acceptor to produce fermentation and products. Streptococcus, lactobacillus, and bacillus, for example, produce lactic acid, while Escherichia and Salmonella produce ethanol. Lactic acid, succinic acid, acetic acid, CO2, and H2. In addition, here are some of the most common fermented foods, cheese, yogurt, wine, kimchi, and olives. We will now be proceeding to the timeline of events which the fermentation begins to take into action. 7,000 BC, cheese production in Iraq following the domestication of animals. 6,000 BC, wine making in the Near East. 1851 CE, Lewis Pasteur developed pasteurization. Pasteur described the spoilage by bacteria of alcohol during fermentation as a disease of wine and beer. 1907 CE, publication of book, Prolongation of Life by Eli Mechnikov, describing therapeutic benefits of fermented milk. 1970 CE, present development of products containing probiotic cultures or friendly intestinal bacteria. 2012, the list of microbial food cultures regarded as grass to be used in all types of food fermentations has been released by IDF and EFFCA. 2021, the fermentation process has undergone significant improvement over the years. With technological advancement, it has become possible to manipulate the fermentation starter culture and the associated microbiome to standardize the product stability, improve sensory properties of the food, and ensure safety. Now, do you gain some knowledge regarding food fermentation? Of course, mother. I'm truly amazed at how microorganisms that can be seen by the naked eye contribute a lot in our lives, especially in the food and drinks that we usually eat at all times. I'm glad you appreciate it. 